I've already made a step-by-step -step tutorial showing how to model hands. However, this tutorial shows how to model hands with four fingers and a thumb while keeping the wrists to only six control staves so that they can easily be stitched to arms with a minimalist number of control points. Create a new file by opening a new instance of Seamless. Select the box and click here to establish the center base of the box. Move the mouse to about here and click to set the length and width. Move the mouse up and then click to set the height. Click the butterfly to convert the boxes to patches. Set the control staves to 4, set the control Z staves to 2 and then click done. With a bird's eye view, zoom in and delete this patch. Click this point and extrude to form the thumbs. Increase the distance, set the insertions to 2 and tick the spiderweb center field. Do the same for these four points to form the fingers. Insert control lines running from one finger end to the next, including the thumb, and one running from the thumb end to the wrist, and one running from the pinky end to the wrist. This leaves us with six control staves for all the fingers and the thumbs. Use the Select Ring tool to select the rings in the fingers and recalculate each of these rings. Click the black hat to hide all the cages and toggle in the click patch to show cage mode so that we can select all the control points for each finger and thumb by clicking each finger and thumb. As you can see, with a little practice, modeling a pair of hands with four fingers isn't difficult with Seamless 3D using NURBS patches. Much of it revolves around editing rings of control points. Minecraft and Animal Crossing New Horizons are two examples of very popular games where the characters don't have any fingers or even a thumb, but I find adding fingers to my characters rewarding and generally well worth the effort in how they enrich the character's appearance. If I had to make the choice between adding a nose or adding fingers to improve my character's aesthetics, I think I would typically rate adding fingers as more important but that's easy for me because I think a lot of noseless characters look cute without a feeling of them lacking something. This is only my opinion of course, you may feel differently. What do you think? Are you four fingers or are you against them? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> With all the finger and thumb stubs positioned and rotated, we can now lengthen the fingers and insert a control ring into each finger. At this stage, our wrists have eight control staves. To stitch our hands onto arms with only six control staves, we can redirect the control lines running from the middle finger to the wrists so that they instead run around the base of the thumb. To do this, start by inserting a control line running from the end of the middle finger to the wrist. Divert the line by clicking this line. It might seem confusing at this stage because the line is now looping around the wrist. However, if we now click here to divert the line back to the finger it ran from, it makes sense. Set the midst field to zero so that our new line aligns exactly with the adjacent lines they are to replace. Finally, delete the two old lines in the finger by clicking delete control line, selecting this line in the wrist and then clicking done. Repeat this procedure for the line on the other side of the wrist. Drag these points away from each other. Check we have six control staves for our wrists. I've curved the fingers a little to make the hands look relaxed. Left with this structure, the hands can look fine 
but I want to insert one more line to add more control over this area of the hands. To do this, insert a control line with it running from here. If the arrow is not pointing towards the fingers, click the reverse button. Click here to divert the line so that it runs between the index and middle fingers. Check everything looks right and then click Done. Open the scene tree window and rename the part node to pelvis so that the polygons for the hands will be imported into the same part as the rest of the body. Save as hands and close down Seamless. Open our character in a new instance of Seamless. Before deleting the old hands, ensure first that all the patches for the hands are contained on this side. We can check the patch borders by going into Show Patch Borders mode by clicking this button, but it will do no harm to cut the patches here regardless of the borders by clicking Cut and inserting a cut to ensure none of the patches in the hands overlap into the arms. Select the hand and delete. Click this midpoint to set the position and import the hands. Select one of the hands and then scale and position it. Before stitching where the two rings meet, we want the two rings exactly aligned. To do this, drag each point close to its matching point and then click the ladybird to move the selected point to the exact location of the nearest point. Because the view orientation plays a role in deciding which is the nearest point, this is best done with a view where there's no possibility of a point being over another point that's hidden from view to ensure it moves to the intended point. When all points are moved to the exact location of their matching points, select one of the rings and then click Stitch. Press Ctrl J to get rid of the seam at the join. Show the skeleton to guide us in getting the first wrist ring aligned with the wrist joint. Reapply ownership to the arms and hands so that our character can animate once again. I've been devoted to Seamless 3D's development since the dawn of this century and I'm excited to finally show more videos that showcase my 3D modeling and animation experience. If you'd like to support the success of free open source Seamless 3D, please comment, like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything.